Perfect. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our Thursday uh, live stream. We're so happy to be here. I'm here with Chris, Jack, and Alessio from Riverhorse. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, well, thank you, everyone, for watching the, the, the live stream today. We're so excited. As you know, Riverhorse is a studio behind the uh, Lords of Bala and Battles of Valerna war game. Actually, Chris is working right now with the war game. Uh, we will talk about that in a bit. Uh, Jack and Alessio are working with Lords of Valla. So how are you guys? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Very good. Yeah, doing very well. Um, yes, yeah, uh, just the, the end of the work day for us and the very start of the work day for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we looked up as well. It's, uh, it's uh, boiling 23 degrees in the office. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because for us 23 degrees it's a bit cold so we normally use like a like a jacket or something to, to cover us <laughs> for you it's super hot <laughs> turn off all the fans that we have around the office just just to like, so that you can't for hear the them. sound quality yeah. yeah um yeah no it's uh it's been a lot of fun looking forward to Sweet. answering some questions yeah, not. actually, we're super excited for this. We have a lot of surprises here. Uh, so let's start with uh, this one. So how, I think this is the question that we all, uh, like everyone has. Uh, how do you become a game designer? Uh, I know that some people dreamed about uh, working game creations, uh, entertainment and stuff like that. As I, when I was a kid, I thought that, you know, that the rule books and stuff like that just existed and you can play and I know magically they, they exist. So how does that happen? Yeah. Well, it's a question that we get asked quite a lot uh, when we meet the public. Uh, and is uh, my answer really is that there isn't a clear path. Uh, you kind of have to make it happen. And the way you make it happen is, you, in my experience, of course, and Jack, Jack, I'm sure, will have a different opinion, a different experience. But the for me is don't get, don't imagine that you go from working in a completely different field, and then suddenly you turn into a game designer. You apply for a game designer position, you turn from not in the industry to game designer. I think it's a lot easier to enter the industry in any way, shape, or form, and to start to work for a company that makes games, not necessarily as a game designer. I'd say it's more likely to, to start you know, working in a store, working, work, working, doing other parts of the commercial part. Uh, once you're in there, once you're in the industry, once you're inside, then work your way from the inside to the position of game designer. I think that that's been my experience, and it seems to be easier than going from the outside to that position. Jack, was that? <laughs> how does that relate to you? Uh, well, my yeah, I guess my my journey was a little bit different um, uh, because I had a little of uh, Kickstarter when uh, when I was sort of starting. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Thing, especially in its being able to, as a you know, a small sort of independent um, uh, designer, sort of just just making games and trying trying to get them out there and, and trying um, to sort of as as you say, go straight to <laughs> straight to game designer. Um, so yeah, I guess my uh, my my journey was just trying and failing. Um, get those. Uh, Get it out there, and uh, I was uh, lucky enough for for Riverhorse to to see that and sort of go. There's there's something here, and um, and give me a chance, and I hope I've uh, lived up to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the you say it's different, but actually, in in a way, it's the point of you were already in the industry, you were already making games, you were already <laughs> trying to get them published, so you were into that process. It wasn't a cold. Yeah. I want to be a game designer. I'll, I will become straight away a game designer. <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, the thing to know is, um, at least, at least early on, and perhaps ever, you're not going to be making a lot of money, and you're not going to be doing it because you want to make money. You're going to be doing it because you want to make games. Um, and so, yeah, that's the that's the uh, the trade. It's, uh, it's filled with people who who love to do it. I'm and, literally here for the hip hop lifestyle. Ah, uh, the, the I feel like I've, James yeah, and, I've, I've been misled. <laughs> Not to self, no pay rises. For <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 really cool. I, I also agree with you that you need to start like with in something. I, I had nothing related with board games before uh, Draco, 
And I, I was that person that when you ask your favorite, like which board game did you enjoy? I was like, oh, uh, Monopoly or Domino or stuff like that. I didn't know the world that it's behind uh, board games. Then I, dis I, I discovered, you know, uh, well, different games. My favorites are uh, Secret Identities, like Coop or stuff like that. So it's great. Uh, I have a question actually for you all here right now, because we know that thanks to a, to a game, you were part of the crew from Lords of the Rings. So how did that feel? <laughs> we were just discussing uh, previously about being a hobbit or a ranger or a warrior. So how, how did that feel to, to be part of, of that big team? How many hours do I have to answer this question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, I'll keep it short. Um, yes, uh, it was incredible. Uh, I always love talking. It's kind of um, Lord of the Rings is my, my religion, really. Uh, <laughs> I was lucky enough that uh, when I was working for Games Workshop, I was uh, involved in making the Lord of the Rings set of uh, the strategy battle game. And we were sent to New Zealand on the set to fact finding, you know, building a relationship. It was all a kind of a mission, like presenting the game to Peter Jackson and everything. And uh, this was between the two towers and the return of the king. So we struck a very good working relationship and a personal relationship too with uh, Peter Jackson and some of the people at Weta, like Richard Taylor. And, um, and amazingly, uh, when we are about to leave, Peter Jackson say, says, hmm, why don't you stay another week or two and I'll put you in the film. We're filming some extra scenes for the Return of the King right now. Would you like to be in the movie? And so we're like, <laughs> so instead of staying, we said, well, we cannot stay. We have work and, uh, and families, but we'll go and come back in two weeks. <laughs> if you say that. And he was like, no, you're not going to come back. You know, uh, you know, New Zealand, England, but the opposite side of the earth. And, uh, and, and basically uh, we did. And uh, yes, we, I got to be on the set. I met all the people. I was wearing uh, rather Ron garb. And uh, I'm, I'm actually in the extended version of the Return of the King as a dead writer, Ron. Very important part. And it was amazing. It was amazing. Knowing all the actors, getting to speak with them, going out for drinks with them. It was amazing. Uh, so it was yeah. a kind of a mystic moment in my life. <laughs> I, I can imagine. I had a crush with the Legolas when I was little. Right, right now, I, I don't have it anymore. But yeah, I had a crush with Legolas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, young, young girls like Legolas, uh, more mature women like Aragorn, from what I know. Oh, yeah. yeah, right now it's Aragorn. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, so, uh, Chris, I have another question uh, for Sorry. you. What... Before, oh, yeah, yeah. before we go to the very important, <laughs> it's very important detail, I actually had a peck on the cheek, a little kiss from, from Arwen, <laughs> which I'm very fond of, <laughs> going from the <laughs> other side of your equation. <laughs> So you are, you are not washing that cheek since that That's right. moment, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so what, what do you what do you consider that makes a game a good game? So we, that, that one is for, for yeah, Chris. Yeah, we had quite a hotly debated conversation about that. Because everyone, I think everyone thinks that their department is the thing that needs to be, you know, stand out in a game. When I think the truth is that everything, every you need to make sure that every part of your game all works towards the same goal of being one unified game. Like if you have sort of what any one element of a game, if it kind of tries to stand out on its own and be completely different and stuff, then you end up with a kind of mismatch of all the cogs that make it work. Um, so I think it, it is really important that your rules people and your graphics people are, I mean, the, the way that we work is that we, yeah, we you know, literally, if there's a graphics question that relates to rules, like if it's about icons or the flow of play or whatever, um, then you just wander over to the desk of the person who's doing the, the rule stuff and, and get their input. Or in more recent times, Skype them. <laughs> or in recent times, Skype them, yeah. Go and stand two meters away from them and <laughs> talk about it. Um, yeah, so I think kind of, um, what's the term? Just a kind of unity of... Synergy. Direct synergy. synergy. <laughs> yeah, I do hate the word synergy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's a lot of examples of games that, um, that nail one aspect and, and sort of, you know, have beautiful art or a very clever, clever rules. But I think it's... A game is, is more than the sum of its parts. When everything works together, it really it really shines and shows. 
So yeah, everything needs to work perfectly, right? The, the art, the layout. Right now, I, I never thought about that, but right now, after all the uh, well, all the 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 the, the meets that the, the meetings that we have had with with Chris, with the layout and everything is like, no, you can't put the symbol here because it's not gonna be seen and stuff like that. So yeah, I think that's that's, that's great. great. Yeah, and try uh, to carry those things as early as possible and get them all. Back. Yeah, and I think to also to give equal weight to all of those factors. Well. It's very easy when you know a lot about one facet of games design, like for example, just just graphics, it's very easy to think that that's the most important thing. Whereas actually it's about a team. Um, and I, I think that's uh, probably the most important thing. Yeah, I can't agree more with, with that. And like talking about the, the games, uh, how how do you balance the game? Like, how do you think? Like, oh, I have a dragon, and he's gonna walk. You no, know, I don't know three spaces, four spaces. Or if you have a this card, you're gonna kill the dragon. So how how do you think all of that? How do you balance the game to make it uh, attractive and so that, easy? I used to be very um, uh, like uh, almost obsessive about when I was uh, first sort of um, starting out, and I would spend ages trying. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd tweak this rule, I'd tweak that rule. I'd, you know, think about it as hard as I could. I'd go away for a week, I'd come back, I'd come up with some sort of uh, way of like um, structuring dice and I'd come up with sort of mathematical models of dice. I, I still do that, it's very fun. Um, but, uh, and I'd, I'd sort of think about something for, for months. This was before I was being paid for it, of course. Uh, so I didn't have someone saying, uh, you need something now. Uh, I'd think about it for months and then uh, then I would try it, and it would it wouldn't be good. wouldn't wouldn't work. Um, and so I think the the magic there is whatever you put out first isn't going to work, and it isn't going to be good. So what I try and do nowadays is I will push something out in a week or two, and I will you know I'll design something, I'll push it out, and it still won't be good, and it still won't be perfect, but I'll have somewhere to go from there, and I can spend those months. Uh, that before I would try and design and then get something perfect to put in front of people. Whereas now I get something good to put in front of people and then iterate from there. And that's where balance comes from. It's iteration, 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 just as much playtesting, as much um, uh, running through stuff, getting in front of people and uh, learning about it. You can sort of, you can s simulate stuff as much as you like. You can sort of theory craft, you can, Think about it for a long time, but uh, as soon as rubber hits road, it's uh, interesting is when you actually get. I, I think it's really interesting as well that um, knowing when balance is important, because mm. there's a, a great. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to attempt to to guess which uh, person, the, which D and D designer it was that I was watching a video of, but they were making the point that it's very important in in Dungeons and Dragons that the barbarian is overpowered. Because anyone who chooses to play a barbarian is going to run into the fray. So you don't want them to be balanced with the rest of the party because they're going to put themselves in a situation where they are kind of more vulnerable um, just because of the type of gameplay that it will do. And I think that sometimes not knowing when to balance something and when mm. not to balance something is it's about chasing the fun rather than uh, the max. And uh, I would add the uh, secret trade secrets so uh, this is very very secretive um, and very revealing but um, i'm afraid that no game is balanced there isn't such thing <laughs> <laughs> not one not chess chess isn't balanced you know white has an advantage <laughs> white moves first wow <laughs> so so nothing is 100 percent balanced the more variables, the more unbalanced things become. And of course, play testing is definitely the answer. It's the most important thing. Absolutely. But yeah, you, you have to accept that 100% full balance doesn't exist. It's, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's the holy grail. You'll never reach it. But it's important to, you know, the, the journey, to try. the quest. <laughs> the quest is important. Trying to get as, as close as possible to that. Yeah, I remember when we were working with Lords of Bala that Tiberia was a favorite for a lot of people and well, Farallon. So Alaria was a little bit left behind. <laughs> right now, I think they are actually balanced. Kind of. We all know that uh, Dan, the, the president of the Drag Studios, is still loving Tiberia more than Alaria. But but yeah, I, I agree with you. I think there's a, the, like you mentioned, the quest. 
to go to, to the balance. Uh, and here's a, a, a difficult question. Which is your favorite game ever? Like if you need to choose one to play, uh, like the only one to play for, I don't know, a year, which one will be the game you will go? Well, I'll go first. Uh, funny enough, if a game that uh, I have to play for a year, I'll choose a game that will last a year. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess my experience was Empires. It's called Empires in Arms. Uh, what, what's called a monster game, giant map of Nap Nap Napoleonic Wars. So you are one of the states and one of the nations in the, in the Napoleonic Wars, and you move armies, you build armies, you forge diplomacy and relationships. You basically it's a immense, long-lasting campaigns that take you know. And in between games, you meet once a week to play, but in between games, you're sending emails in character and stuff. So, so it's uh, that all-encompassing. Yeah, Empires in Arms for me. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, if I had to. If I had to pick, it would probably be uh, some form of, uh, of role play. That's what I seem to be uh, playing a lot of nowadays. But... Oh. The um, Twilight Imperium. Um, I love a story. I love a game that uh, sort of dominates a day. <laughs> it's, uh, it's okay. We're going to start at you know, 10 o'clock in the morning and we're going to be playing until five o'clock at night and it's going to be, you know, the whole day. And I think uh, similar to sort of Alessio's answer, it's, it's something that creates this this story, this shared sort of story between everyone uh, and these conversations and these um, this sort of politicking um, between between players, which I think is a really, um, a really fun part of board games that uh, just isn't the same. I think a lot of um, a lot of different mediums, so video games and things like that. I think what board games do, and of course the last year has been hard for it, but um, they get people around the table. That's a very visceral about that oh, Imperium. I think is the uh, for me. That I think that um, greatest board game is. It's which one? I think we're having a little bit of noise. Battlesheet. Oh, battleship. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a it's a very simple game that takes anywhere between uh, twenty minutes to an hour to play. That's that's sheep, not ship. Yes, <laughs> battleship. Um, uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. If you've not played it, get go for it. it so this is actually sheep's fighting. Kind of. It's a it's an area control hex based game where you move stacks of sheep, and when sheep run out of moves, then they they can't move, and the person with the most sheep left at the end wins. It's real fast paced, and you can get some really cutting red wedding betrayals <laughs> in such a lovely little friendly game about sheep. Um, but you can invest too much emotionally in it, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny. It's a very it's very. Um, I think we've got sort of. A very uh, different time scale in all of our games. Of uh, Alessio's is about a year. I've yeah. got about a day, and then you've got about twenty minutes. Um, I think that says something about our attention spans. But uh... I, I, I like the the description about the something like you can betray something because one of my favorites it's uh, well Avalon or uh, Secret Hitler Coup, where you actually need to manipulate and, and cheat and try to betray everyone. To, to win, so I I will choose one of those. <laughs> Have you played really Diplomacy? Like no, I haven't. <laughs> but I will write it down because it sounds like my kind of game. <laughs> Coup is very good. And very short. So, yeah, the, the thing with Coup is that you only like you can only play like uh, four roles, like the the, the Condes. Well, in in Spanish, it's La Condesa, uh, yeah, it was... uh, the thief, the assassin. So yeah. But I like it. Like to to make it quick, I think it's one of it's a it's a good mm. thing. Uh, so, what's the greatest challenge and the most rewarding experience of creating games? Do you have any fun facts when creating a, a game or something? Well, I can start this one. Uh, that's a very deep question. Uh, the biggest challenge for me is simplicity. Uh, that's the that's my quest. You know, I've done this ever in my career. I always try to kill as many rules as possible. Kill rules, 
<laughs> That's my duty <laughs> in life. Yeah, basically boil things down, remove things, simplify. Can this game work with, you know, if we kill this, so will this fix the issue instead of trying to build? Because it's easy to solve problems by adding clusters and stuff. And oh, if this happens, then we do this, then we do that. And I tend to go, no, 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 no. If this happens, what about if this doesn't happen? <laughs> Take it away. It cannot happen. Is the game better or worse? So yeah, is that simplification that I think is my greatest challenge, my greatest mission. The greatest reward for me is when a family uh, with you know with Tales of a Quest or with role play games with Labyrinth, when families say things like, oh, I spent so many hours happy I was with my kids, my wife, my fiance, my my friends. That's playing this game, and it was, you know, we were there, we were in the movie, we were in Labyrinth, we were in in My Little Pony. That moment when the people tell you that you're creating and designing joy in their lives, it's the most rewarding for me. What about you guys? <laughs> I think a um, really sort of rewarding challenge is um, Starting because uh, a lot of the the work we do is um, sort of thematic, either from a license, from a sort of source material, and turning that into into a game. Sort of, so I really enjoy finding the game within some source material. So finding what's fun about that universe, about that world, uh, about that IP, and sort of what character it's fun to play in in that world, and how to turn that into into a game. Um, and sort of what to focus on there. So I think um, I think turning theme into mechanics is um, when it when you get it right, it feels really good. When when you get that visceral, uh, so for example in in Dragon Bond where you where you sort of push six six units across the board and you you make that gamble to sort of uh, attack Tiberia across the mountains and send your entire army and that sort of uh, that generals pushing their their units sort of. Um, yeah, getting that um, that theme to puts you in the war room. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think when you get that right, that's uh, that's the moment for me. That's the uh, the joy. Ooh. And uh, do you have any like fun facts creating the games? Like, oh, we're gonna do this, and then totally changing like the the, the whole game. <laughs> um, like it happens. It it happened in in Draco. <laughs> So maybe you have like a fun fact there. Um, we've definitely uh, had games where you've just sort of gone and and thrown basically everything out. Um, I remember we worked on a um, a Terminator Terminator card game that sort of um, started out as this uh, sort of yeah um, uh, had it had some sort of deck builder elements, but it had a lot more sort of. Uh, well, this is unless you like this one because it was um, a lot more sort of complication and building out of of your sort of your play space, and it was this sort of big sprawling mess. And we we played that, and sort of it was fun, but it was hours, and it was grindy, and uh, basically there was this really cool mechanic in it that sort of um, was sort of an offhanded mechanic that was, oh, what if you know, you, you shuffle the Terminator into this into this deck, and so you don't know when he's going to turn up, and when you turn that card over, he turns up, and sort of the whole game then becomes about survival until you can get rid of that Terminator. And sort of, it was one of those sort of moments where it's like, okay, yeah, let's let's destroy everything apart from basically this mechanic and start again. Um, and like, that idea of um, of being able to to throw away everything else um, is is very difficult. It is very um, like because that's that's a couple of weeks of work. Um, but it was definitely the right decision with that product. Um, and so now it's this nice, sleek, sort of under an hour game um, that's all about this sort of this unique um, aspect rather than sort of uh, a load of extra sort of extra stuff added on. But, uh, Okay, sorry, I, I think I was like uh, cut out uh, somewhere. We had some tech difficulties, but I'm back. So I, I heard most of it. <laughs> sorry for mm -hmm. that. I'm glad that every everyone is back in and nothing happened. Well, I, uh, had I have a, a question. No, no, go, go, go. Uh, no, you, asked for, you asked for funny stories. I was thinking through my career, if it was a funny story. I remember one where I designed a game for a big company. I shall not name names. 
and uh, <laughs> and we spent months designing this thing and to the brief to the agreed brief etc etc we then finally the thing is ready we and the big boss the big boss comes in plays the game and goes i like it but have you thought about putting cards in this we're like <laughs> no, because you six months ago when we said what was going into this <laughs> this game, etc., we ruled that out and we went with the dice and this and then no cards. No, I think it would be better with cards. <laughs> this is like the, the the deadline is like tomorrow, and he goes, "All right, have another six months. Yeah, we'll be cards. Start the game." <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to redo the same game, but you can't, which is very funny. About uh, there's a lesson there, I suppose, about communication. And stuff. Yeah. Oh, it, it happens. I can relate with that. I, I'm not allowed to talk about those changes in Dragon, <laughs> but yeah, it happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, well, I have a question from Vale actually that uh, uh, that Jack mentioned something about Dragonborn. What do you like most about the game, Lords of Vala? I think it's the I really like the asymmetrical, like being able to play a dragon or a general, um, and those having sort of very different uh, styles of play. So you've got the the dragon sort of rampaging around as these sort of unstoppable, like uh, single point traveling um, monsters, and then you've got the general sort of. Um, I think the technical word is splodging out. Um, that, is sort of, that is the military yeah, word, yeah. Yeah, uh, sort of these expanding forces that are ever growing. Um, and you've got sort of these two very different styles of play. Um, and I love it when uh, sort of epic play gets to uh, gets to work together. And I think, um, yeah, so being able to play a dragon or a, an army and having those sorts of things interacting is I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> so the, the big question here with Lords of Valor is, what do you rather play, dragon or general? For me, it's dragon. I totally love destroying and moving around, and that's it. The, I love the fact that the dragons are there. Personally, I do think I prefer general. Um, okay. You're a thinker, though, right? <laughs> I'm a smasher. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's definitely a sort of, yeah, you can. The dragons really um, benefit that, that sort of bold, like, oh, I'm I'm going to go here and I'm going to ruin somebody's day. Uh, whereas generals, quite often, they're just like, I don't want to be left alone to grow my armies and, and sort of build up and become unstoppable. But these dragons keep on running about and eating all my, uh, eating all my people. Um, so, yeah, I think it would be general for me if I was... Uh... How does it... What does he say that the two game designers in a group like to be generals and <laughs> not with, like to be dragons? <laughs> Mystery. What, think, what about you, Chris? Dragon? Yeah, the fact that Sorry. when we do go to play, when we're like, if I'm free for a play test, which it gets rarer and rarer the closer to the end of a project we get. <laughs> but like, I, I do quite like being having a choice when you sit down and going, hmm, what do I feel like today? <laughs> Do I like you can it's the same game, but there are these two flavors that you can pick when you sit down to play, which is rare. You know, you, if you said, oh, let's play a game of was just rapidly looking around the room. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess that's asymmet asymmetry again. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I prefer Dragon because I think it's a bit uh easier to to conquer because i have seen like a lot of tokens with with generals but i, th I think it's great and going out to to dragon Bond, what caught your attention about dragon Bond, about the setting we are we always love to do this question <laughs> <laughs> try start but for, for me the coming when you when, when you started when we started to interact what, what was incredible uh still is uh, very exciting is the the fact that you guys are not designing a war game or designing a board game, or doing comics, or doing books. You're right. doing it all, uh, which is you know, it's <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing, and it's very exciting to be part of this. Uh, of this, you know, this, this this mission, this this thing, to this quest, like we were saying, to bring this whole world to life with so many facets, so many media, different. So it's wow. That that was caught my that caught my attention. Uh, for me, right, I, everywhere. I like dragons. <laughs> 
I used to uh, I used to collect uh, the Games Workshop ones as a as a kid. I had you know the Forest Dragon, Fire Dragon, um, others, <laughs> uh, which I always thought was Smaug, but clearly it wasn't Smaug because uh, the Hobbit didn't exist uh, back then. The movie The Hobbit. The yeah, the movie The Hobbit. <laughs> sorry, the Not the me. miniatures range. The Hobbit, I guess, is is more accurate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was. As a kid, I was very obsessed with dragons. I remember playing dragons, um, which was basically running around and shouting fire breath. Um, but yeah, no, I, I used to be obsessed with them and um, I've never quite lost that. <laughs> they're, they're fun. Hmm. I love the gnomes. The the little, the, I don't think they're called gnomes, the little, um, the little purple guy, the little black eyes who have the, the little support truck um they're excellent <laughs> they're, the, they're the most adorable thing i've ever seen oh the, the, the pins from as well i agree That's, yeah <laughs> i love their little dirt hats like they, they've made cloaks and hats out of turf so if they lay down they just look like a little hill it's yeah. so smart because they're not it's not like they're going to defend themselves is it like they <laughs> It's like each one of them is a Shire house. So. Yeah, they just need an emergency hide protocol for when the monsters come. It'd just be like, oh, quick, lie down. <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's my favourite bit about <laughs> that, That's great. Like, actually, from Isbel, they are my favourite unit. Yeah. yeah. yeah and uh, what, what do you think that makes uh, Dragon Bond a unique fantasy setting? Oh, like, we, we try to, to make it different from <laughs> all the settings out there. So what do you think it's... Uh, the, the main uh, reason it's a unique fantasy setting. I think I like the mixture. Oh, sorry. No, go for it. Sorry. Okay. Well, what I like is the, is the mixture of uh, cultures that is far, far more subtle, I would say, than some other uh, products out there and some other uh, uh, books and novels, etc. Where you kind of go right, yeah, these guys are the Germans. These guys, you know, but actually, that there's a lot more subtlety to to the. Melange to the mix of cultures and races. There's you know the Orientalness, the mixes with the European influences, the the, the the American bit. So it's yeah, it's that subtle mixture which I think is very well mixed, the right amount. I would say. Sweet that that yeah. Uh, one of the things like, like one of my favorite uh, realms. There are not factions. Factions. It's for Eldritch. Uh, my favorite realms. It's Nahuac because it's inspired in well Mexican culture. Well Mexican. Uh, ancient culture, the you know the, the the Mayas, Aztecs, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's super cool. And even one of the dragons, it's uh, inspired of one of the gods from uh, Aztecs, Cuxquatl, uh, Quetzalcoatl. So yeah, that's super cool. What what do you think, uh, Jack, Chris? I, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I I agree. I think the um, the kind of um, fantasy twist on ancient history, um, kind of focused more than the um, kind of like that. There are, there are a lot of kind of Tolkienian tropes, which I think it's it's more interesting that Dragon Bond seems to approach it from a um, taking the historical cultures, like you were saying, with the um, the Aztec Mayan faction, um, yeah, and then getting to see what happens if they fight the uh, the kind of um, Nordic slash Barons War knightly <laughs> faction in the, in the north. You know, it's a that's a conflict that. I'd be interested to see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a what if. Uh, I think for me, uh, not to sound like a, a broken record, but again, the dragons. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yes, the dragons. <laughs> variety between them. Quite often, you get um, dragons being there's a type in that world, uh, but in Dragon Bond, of course, there's uh, there's lots of different sort of versions and. Uh, so different species within the dragons. Uh, I love the um, the feathered serpent, the uh, the Quetzal sort of uh, Quetzalcoatl style dragon. Uh, then you've got your more classic sort of Pharrell and Fulgans, your your big sort of um, uh, sort of meaty Western dragons, and then you've got some Eastern sort of influences. Uh, so yeah, I think that like that variety in what is a very recognizable sort of creature um, is is very cool. Yeah, personally, I think that uh, in Draca, having different broods of dragons, my favorite is uh, Aureus Fulgen and its root, Perelon being his son. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite good. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen that. And uh, well, before moving to the end and, and everything, we are almost 37 minutes. 
Uh, well, time flies with you. <laughs> uh, the last question would be, uh, any word to backers expecting to, to join us on Dragon Ball Lords of Bala? Well, I'll latch on to what I was saying before is, guys, if you buy into this product, you're not just buying into one product, you're buying into a world, into an all-encompassing world of hobby. So there's a <laughs> lot to explore. Join us in this exploration. Also, we, we've gotten to work on the secret stuff that you'll only get to see if it matches all the stretch goals. So, True. You know, <laughs> we know, we know secretly what you have to look forward to. And <laughs> <laughs> we want to share. Uh, finally, I just hope that you all enjoy Lords of Valor. Uh, worked really hard on it, and um, it's a lot of fun. Game is very good. Can't wait to play it for fun. Yes. Not yeah, I can't wait to play it physically because we have been testing it, at, you know, Tabletopia, uh, Tabletop Simulator, but I need to hold the mini and actually play it. <laughs> I, I can't wait to uh, I finish this project, then not play it for a few months <laughs> and then come back to it. And sort of that, because there's that first time as a game designer that you actually ever get to, you sort of, get to forget some of the stuff about the game and then come back to it and sort of experience it as a... Yeah. It's usually the manufacturing period, isn't it? You stop yeah. designing a long yeah. manufacturing period and then you get to play your game months later when it comes in through the post. And you're like... I and like, like a fresh new game, right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I have one question from Mitzi. I just received it. Uh, in the middle of a board game battle, which pieces are you? The scout, the tank, the DPS, the sniper? Oh, <laughs> support. That's... I like healing people. Support is good. I like I like having uh, I like having friends. Uh, <laughs> like everyone... <laughs> the medic. Yeah. Uh, that's always nice. Mm. I think tank though, because if I ever play tank or barbarian or someone with just a big pile of hit points, I feel like my I I can muck around a bit and have enough time i can take things i can take things not very seriously up until things start to look bleak and then i can start paying attention to what i should be doing yeah i think although although i do want to say support um i do really like big numbers and so sort of that any sort of point damage thing where you're you get to say oh you know i I add this bonus and I roll this die and now I've done 438 damage. So everyone, you're the new car. Yeah, everyone goes to make a cup of tea. The new car. I'm back and I'm like, I killed everything. That is a running joke in every board game that we play with you. It gets to Jack's turn and we all just kind of go, what are we going to do for the next half hour? <laughs> play a game of Battle Sheep on the side. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's great. It, it sounds funny. I need to play with Jack something else and Dragon Bond. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for this time. I actually, uh, I haven't had any other question right now from the audience. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, for the people watching us, I'm right now watching Facebook. We know uh, we have some uh, viewers there and I know the rest is on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, see you on August 2nd on the Kickstarter. And uh, well, have a great day right now. Uh, well, almost your afternoon night. <laughs> but for the people on this side of Earth, have a great day and thank you so much, guys. <laughs>